I'm so buyer heavy and it's just, it's such a stressful position to be in. This 20 minutes was just eye opening because I'm like, what the heck am I doing with my day? This is a coaching student of mine that's built her business revolving around sphere and referral deals. Right now in her second year of real estate, she's experiencing um, difficulty with growth and consistency because she's just relying on business to be handed to her. She's also spending a lot of money on Google ads and Facebook ads, which is great, but she doesn't know how to convert them into actual appointments and transactions. So in this video, I fix her exact problems and this might fix yours too. How long have you been doing this? Two years now. Two years. Okay, what did first year look like um, transaction and, and GCI wise? First year, I think I did, I think it was six deals. Okay. And I think I made $35,000. Nice. Where did, the, where did those six transactions come from? I think two of them came from an open house. Two of them came from family friends. And then two of them came from uh, my lead who just didn't have the time to work with the buyers at the time. So it was more of a referral. Okay. So you were doing some stuff to generate some business through open house and what kind of other yeah. lead generation methods were you using your first year? Uh, my first year, um, I also uh, made a YouTube channel. Nice. Um, and so I got leads coming from the channel, but wasn't able to convert them. One of my videos took off. It was like five things you need to know before moving to nice. the city. Yeah. Um, and I got like five people who had either texted me or called me um, and said, you know, they had in they're interested in, you know, the city and um, <clears throat> it was more of a wishy-washy thing. Like it, I was trying to obviously see like timeline and why they were moving here. All through text really or? Hard. I'd always try and get them on a phone call. Okay. Oh, and when you got him on a phone call, a, like, were you able to set an appointment to talk about it? it no, not set an appointment. Okay. So it's more so just having that initial general conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Like, what's what's got you moving to so-and-so, um, and what's your timeline? I think where I fell short with that was the timelines were always so, like, oh, probably within a year or two. Okay. And to me, I was just like, okay, I don't know if I can waste my time with these people right now. You a know year or I mean? two? Yeah. So Do you know what I that trigger for. was? Do you know what was stopping them? what they were waiting for? Do you know what needed to happen for them to make that move? Uh, no, that's a really good question. Okay, all right. So it's, I wasn't asking, you know, the right questions, I guess, but to me, like, it was like, oh, we're a year or two away. I was just like, okay, well, I'll just keep you in my CRM. Okay. I did, obviously didn't do a great job of following up. So yeah, I guess that's kind of what happened with my YouTube. Okay, um, let's skip back then, to the second year. How did the second year look? Uh, so second year now, I've kind of more hit it off with you know social media instagram facebook stuff like that i have dwelled into google ads um i've got leads generated through them but again it's tough for me to convert so I what, think what, that's what? where i struggle the most okay yeah, your I'm conversion so the first year you did about 30 something thousand dollars and then second year yeah so right now i've probably made her i think it's fifty six thousand. Uh, how many transactions 11. And give me a breakdown of where those 11 came from. Yeah, so it's nice right now because I feel like I'm at the age where a lot of my friends are starting to buy. So a bulk of, I think, probably five or six of those have just been, like, friends buying. Nice. Um, and then I think three of them have been past clients. Okay. Who, um, like, I have a guy right now. We bought something last year, and he's needing to sell it again. Mm -hmm. So one of them is coming from there. And then the other two um, were like a referral, just like family friend referral. Five friends, three past clients, two referrals? Yeah. That is, okay, that's 10. So the good news is you're very likable so that people are <laughs> coming to you and, and referring you. And that's awesome. I, I, I have, I don't have that. <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> That's really good, um, and that says a lot about you, positive things, um, but obviously mm -hmm. you want the ability to control your business. It's hard to control like how many of your friends hit you up, how many friend of your friends are ready, how many of your past clients yeah. are ready, and how many referrals you're gonna get. You want the, abil the ability to like get the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google ads, and then convert them, right? And yeah. right now, you're, it exactly. looks like you're looking more into outbound instead of just waiting for business because it looks like yeah. mo like all, almost all, all – and I'm – you know, obviously, you put in work, but almost all your business came from just coming to you. It's all exactly. inbound. Um, 
we want more outbound. That's how you, that's how you grow. That's how you like control your business. That's how you like yeah. in any market, that's how you control your business in a down market. That's how you do well. Mm -hmm. If you don't figure out the outbound in a bad market, you're fucked. Before we get into outbound, let's talk about these paid ads or um, uh, social media. So you're doing Google mm -hmm. ads, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. So you're paying, yeah. you're paying. I'm paying to, yeah, I'm paying for those ads. Yeah. Okay. And Instagram and YouTube content, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Um, have you, how's conversion going with those? Uh, non-existent. Like I'm getting leads okay. and they're almost like leads that are, they're just clicking on something to click on it or, you know, they're, they're not, their intentions aren't serious. Do you so, think that if your conversion rate or follow-up was better, they would? I'd like to believe so, yeah, potentially. Okay. Because, yeah, um, for Facebook ads, a lot of them are not going to be good, you know? Yeah. Um, I can't yeah. remember the statistic. There's this, like, mega beast in my marketplace that talks about Facebook ads. He's like, I think, like, 1% to 3% of them will transact in the first, in the next, like, 12, in the next 12 months or so, like, something, like... You are going to have to sift through a lot of garbage, but this is where you do get business from. Mm -hmm. Teams are made from Facebook ads. You just want to make sure that you're converting yeah. at a high rate. I, I want to talk about two things, your conversion on those, and then uh, what's going on with your outbound prospecting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. these are like paid ad inbound. And then um, if we focus on your outbound, mm -hmm. You could easily double what you've done this year, easily double what you've done this year, next year. Okay, so like 10 from like inbound from your family, like we can easily match that 10 from, dude, just from your social media and just from, like it would be, it wouldn't be that crazy to triple the 10, just based on the um, social media and the outbound, 10 and 10. Yeah. And then 10 from your sphere and referrals. Best clients. Let's talk like social media conversion. How's like, what's, what's your, like, what are you doing? Yeah. So like, what's the content or the conversion alone? Um, how do they come to you? And then what are you saying to them? And what's the process there? Yeah. So <clears throat> usually I'm trying to post things that are like hyper-focused to like where I'm, you know, my community. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's the content that, people most, you know, resonate with. Um, a couple other things are just like quick home tours with, um, like what your down payment could look like. I think people like to see numbers. So I think, you know, that's a little bit, um, easier for people to follow along and are a little bit more intrigued with. Um, but yeah, mainly those are the two things, um, like hyper-focused community tours, whether that be um, like a restaurant or a coffee shop or something like that. And then, uh, home tours, like what you could get for X amount in X city. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I get decent amount of interaction with those videos. Um, in terms of getting, you know, leads, I think I've only been able to get two leads from social media. Are you like giving so, them an incentive to reach out to you with? Hey, Dan, comment, um, no. comment down below this and I'll send you over like the buyer's guide for this city. No. Okay. Mm -mm. So like, that's mm -hmm. how you get them to like reach out to you for with a reason to, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. I would go to like manychat.com, create an automation where you're like, Hey, if they comment the word pizza, they automatically get triggered to receive this PDF and that PDF mm -hmm. has to be valuable. Like, Hey, um, homes are homes that are underneath. Uh, a list of homes that are underneath $400,000 in this city. List of homes in X amount of price in this area, or like here's the buyer's guide on like how to write a winning offer to get into a home. Like it's something mm -hmm. like That's that. Cool. Yeah. It's something where they yeah. have to like, uh, like here are the things that you need to do before like putting in an offer. Or like mm -hmm. something that makes them go like, I think I need to know that. Yeah. Pizza. And then they get their, the PDF and now you know who watched it and you're like, Hey, what's going on? And that's when you can start yeah. asking like qualifying questions like, Hey, let, okay, great. sounds like you want to like, let's hop on a zoom call and let's go over exactly like what it is that blah, 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 blah. And then set the appointment. Yeah, that's great. 
Okay, so like your mm -hmm. goal is to like get them on a call or a Zoom call and your goal is to set an appointment. Okay, so yeah. like either you reach out to them or have them schedule a call with you on Calendly. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what your Instagram would be. For Facebook and Google, okay. it will be different. Um, what's going on with your Facebook and Google ads? Google ads is something I'm just kind of delving into, and that's a whole other beast mm -hmm. compared to Facebook ads. Pretty familiar with how Facebook ads are. I just feel like the leads that come through Facebook, like I said, are just people clicking on something and they're not serious about it. I would say nine times out of 10, when I do get a lead coming through Facebook and I reach out to them, whether you know, they give me their email or phone, they're just not interested. They're like, oh yeah, I don't know what I clicked on. That's okay. So, if you ever, hey, look, if you ever did buy a home in the future, when do you think that might be? Maybe like two years from now. Great. What's got you wanting to buy a home in two years? Well, I'd really like a backyard. I'm living in a condo right now. Oh, nice. And what's stopping you from doing that right now? Well, I guess saving up money for a down payment. Okay. There's plenty of down payment assistance programs. If we can make this make financial sense for you now, would you consider moving, making that move sooner? Maybe. Great. Yeah, I do this all the time. Let's get together on, on a Zoom. We could go over exactly what the numbers would look like, what kind of homes are available for you. And if it makes sense and you love the backyard that you could be living in, then you can make some decisions from there. I've got time today at four or six. What works best for you? Oh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, we could talk. And now that two years turns into like eight months. I think that's just what I struggle most with is I just don't know what to say and when to say it. Okay. And so obviously that has a heavy effect into my conversion rate, right? Maybe you shouldn't be spending money on ads right now. Yeah. You know, or like at least slow it down. It's like, great, you're getting these leads, but then I'm like, then what? Yeah. What's happening exactly. with those? Okay, so you, you need the framework of conversion. That would fix your, mm -hmm. that would fix all of your problems. Okay. Um, let's let's go into cold calling right now. How's that going? Yeah, so I just started doing that like two months ago. Okay. And something completely new to me. Like I've I've never done any type of cold calling even in my previous job. So uh -huh. this is just a whole new world. Yeah. Um, but I know that it's it's a way to make me feel more in control of my business because as I told you earlier, I'm so buyer heavy and. It's just, it's such a stressful position to be in and an annoying one at the same time because you're so dependent on other people. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I got into this business is because I wanted to have a little bit more of my time. You know what I mean? So I had that realization, you know, like I've seen other people do it. Why can't I do it? And then now that I'm doing it, it's like, what the heck? Like, what do I say? <laughs> So that's where, again, I struggle with. I'm not sure what to say and how to say it. Okay. So I'm thankful that I came across framework because simply just going through that, because it, it's not even not knowing how to say it, like not knowing what to say and how to say it. Like there's so much more to it. Uh -huh. I think has kind of calmed my mind down a little bit because I remember like one of your first videos was basically just like, fuck it. Like the worst thing that can happen is someone hangs up on you. And I think that was my like roadblock into getting to cold calling was fear of rejection. And what I like most about the framework is it really is like a mental game. Once you get, you know, pushed past the mental game, it's, it's yours to take. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the biggest thing, like one of the biggest hurdles I was, you know, scared of was being able just to make the call. But it's like, if you just take a step back and just look at what you're doing, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. And now that I've kind of got over that, it's like, okay, well, like, what do I say now? Like, what if they ask this question? What, what mm -hmm. if they ask that question? It's like, I, I kind of lack the confidence. And that's one of the other things that you talked about is you need to have the confidence because you're the guide in all of this. And so, um, obviously hoping to continue to grow in those skills. Um, it's a little bit tough starting out, right? So, yeah. Yeah. When you start anything and you're going to suck, that's normal. Yeah. That's just a natural, like yeah. 
like the four stages of learning is like unconscious incompetence, meaning mm-hmm. you're you don't know what you're doing. And then it's mm-hmm. conscious incompetence where you're like, I know that I'm screwing up. I'm I know yeah. I'm screwing up here. I'm aware that I'm screwing up. And then it's conscious competence where you're like, I know what to do and I have to like think to know what to do. And then it's unconscious mm-hmm. competence where you're like, I just do it. You yeah. know? Uh, yeah. and like even when you're driving, it's you have to you're very aware of everything that you're doing. You have to like think of you, you. You don't know what you're doing, and you also have to think of everything, you know. Yeah. Where now it's like yeah. it's whatever. You could drive and like talk on the phone and eat at the same time. Yeah. So it's gonna be. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Don't get discouraged. Like you are going to figure it out. It's just a matter of like who's holding your mm-hmm. hand, what kind of resources you have, and how much are you practicing. Yeah. Okay. So, how long are you cold calling a day? So I have it written down here. So like eight to nine, I'm just kind of like going through a FISBO script. For an entire hour? See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like, I'm so in my head. I feel like I have to know every, I told you, I need to know everything from A to Z. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Rip me apart. Go ahead. No, no, it's all right. It's okay. It's, It's okay to not want to know everything. That's fine. Um, But there's also like a fine line of, well, are you taking action? Yeah. Also, is it like the best thing to do to be script practicing for an hour at eight? You know, what if you just moved it back to seven to eight so that eight, which is like the times where you are allowed to solicit, Mm -hmm. you're soliciting when you can. Yeah. You know, like I would say start at eight. Okay. Until how long? From 9 to 11, I'll just try and push as many Facebook calls as I can. Okay, great. And then what? And then... What's, your, what's the rest of what's the that? day? What's the rest of the day look like? Yeah, so usually from 9 to 11, try and push as many cold calls as I can for, for sale by owners. Cause there's just a lot in our market right now. Hmm. Um, and then from 12, I'll take a quick lunch. And then like, um, you know, 1 to 2 is follow-up. And then follow up from either the people that I didn't get a chance to on the phone um, or just follow up with clients that I'm currently with right now, just checking in on them. Two to four is kind of similar client check-in and after four, I'm usually doing showings. So it's like my afternoons or evenings are just... So two to four, you're doing client check-ins. How often are you checking in on your clients? Like active clients? What do you mean? Active clients or like if I'm doing follow-up with clients who are like in my CRM, just like trying to touch base with them, trying to get touches, stuff like that. And what's the point of the touches? Just to stay in front. Are you, and, and these clients, how do you define clients? Who are these people that you're calling from two Not to four? clients or leads or something or people who have came in, you know, people who said that. Just trying like to stay in front. Okay, 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 I see. Um, what does staying in front mean? And what is the outcome of these calls? No, they're not calls. They're just like emails or something or like a market report or like something like that. From two to four? Yeah. Okay. All right. So then one to two is what? One to two is just follow up from the physical calls that I didn't get on the phone. So I'm just calling them again. Hmm. Okay. They answer the phone. And so what happens with your like database, your CRM? What's what you're following up? What, what's What's going on with them? Like, what do you mean? Well, you, I'm sure you have a bunch of leads that you've gotten from open houses your first year or cold calling in the last two months or the social media ads. So the social media mm-hmm. leads, like what's happening with those? They're just in my database. And like, now that I'm talking to you, it's probably really pointless to, <laughs> I guess, check in with them the way that I am. Um, but I always just think it's better than doing nothing. So just... It is better than doing nothing. Trying to... It is better than yeah. doing nothing. Um, when you're following up, your goal is to set an appointment. Mm-hmm. Is that your intention? I, now that I've kind of been opened up to this, it needs to be my intention. Because what's the point of even following up with them if I can't convert them? 
Dude, um, following up, just checking in, is a mm. really easy way to train them to not pick up your calls. Mm. It's like, oh, this, it's, oh, it's the guy that's just following, just checking in again. I don't need to take this call. Yeah. I know exactly how this is going to go. Yeah. You know, and if they keep picking up the call for you to for you to check in, that pro that person, that's a, probably a sign of a low IQ. Yeah. You know, like if if I just kept checking in on you, wouldn't you be annoyed? So you need to change your, it's, it's either going to be like, you know, if someone's moving in the next like year, maybe sometimes two, the goal is to set an appointment. Like mm -hmm. the further out leads, it's to like get a time update. Hey, you said you were moving in five years, right? Yeah. Uh, to move close to your uh, family in Arizona. Okay, great. And you said five years. What's stopping you from doing that right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Kids have to graduate. Okay, so would you consider making this move if it made financial sense? We found you that great house in Arizona next to your kids. Um, would it make sense for you to move while your kids are in school? Would you consider make, making that move like to switch them schools? And that might be a yes or a no, but at least you're trying to like test that trigger because with every move, there's a trigger. There's something that has to happen before you make that move. Oh, moving in two years? What needs to happen for you to move, move in two years? What's that trigger? You know? Mm -hmm. At what point are you going to say, okay, now it's time to make this move? What needs to happen for you to make that move? Oh, that? Well, mm -hmm. oh, your kids have to graduate? Well, would you... And now you have to test the trigger. Would you move if your kids didn't graduate? Like, would you move mid-school? Oh, you might? Okay, great. What would need to happen for you to decide that? What's the trigger for that? You just need this. You just need to find a good deal over there. Well, if we could help you find a good deal over there and connect you to a great agent over there that could maybe find you some off-market properties. Sounds like that's exactly what you're looking for, right? Yeah, great. Let's meet on Zoom. And now you've got yourself at a point because it is easy. Yeah, it is easy. You just have yeah. to understand the framework. Yeah. So, like, you need to go into these calls with that kind of intention. Like, I'm, it's Ooh. never a, hey, just checking in. Any, need anything from me? No? Okay. Like, that's so useless. And it's annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to resist the urge of saying shut off the ads. And just focus on conversion. Yeah. You know? Like, what's the point of the ads if, you, if you're not even, like, following up with them? You don't know how to set the appointment yet? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, though. So. Saying it out loud. But I like that you have the balls to do it. The fact that you are doing social media leads, because, like, you know, in order for you to scale eventually, like, in your third, fourth year, you do want to consider, do I need to, do I want to do this forever? Do I want to show homes forever? Do I want to go on listing appointments yeah. forever or would I rather be on a beach right now? Yeah. What would it look like for me to scale and like grow a team? Yeah. And you do need leads like that. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be glad mm -hmm. that like I was scared to do that and like mm -hmm. you're already doing it, which is great. So you already have the mm -hmm. balls. Um, now we just need to like get you converting them. Okay. So yeah, exactly. For dude, for your check-ins, for your emails that you're spending two hours on, I would do that at night. Okay. okay. You shouldn't be like doing that in the daytime where it's socially acceptable for you to be talking to people. You should be talking to people. Mm -hmm. In two to four, I would replace that with more calling. Okay. Okay. So it, it should look like eight to eleven cold calling, and nothing can get in the way of that. You know, I learned from Greg Harrelson, who does, who owns like nine Century 21s, that does 4,000 transactions between the nine. And then he does like 200 to 400 personal deals a year. He's like, eight to 11 is my uncompromisable prospecting time. And no one can ever get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. That should be your uncompromisable prospecting time. 
Okay. Take your lunch, and then like for the next, uh, your showings are after what time? Usually around four or five when people are getting off of work. Great. Okay. So showings after four, but that gives you like four hours after a one hour lunch. It gives you four hours of like making stuff, making something happen. And I promise by replacing the two hours of emailing or like texting, by replacing that with actual like prospecting or following up with the intention of setting appointments, you're going to have like a different experience in your business. Yeah. Pair that up with like a higher conversion rate, you're going to change your financial situation. This 20 minutes was just eye opening because I'm like, what the heck am I doing with my day? <laughs> what I like most, and I told you this earlier too, is like there's already so much account accountability within this group. So I think that's going to be helpful for someone like me who's just kind of not new, but like newer to outbound prospecting because it is a hurdle in itself. It is, it's, it's tough to start wanting to make calls to strangers, right? Mm -hmm. But like something was just said today in the discord. And I think it was you actually, you're just like, look at your bank account. That should be enough motivation. Yeah, right. Like, if I wouldn't have seen that this morning, because I was like, dude, he's so right <laughs> right now. But it's so simple. But it's just like that little message coming across my phone is like, okay, like, let's go. Mm. So it's, it's nice to have that. I just think, yeah, obviously, not knowing where to start is always, always the toughest place to be in. Yeah. Um, but that's why I'm really thankful to have come across, you know, the framework of conversion, because it's, it's breaks everything down so, so simple. Yeah. Like I said, you know, when people are starting something new, it's kind of a little bit chaotic. They're a little bit overwhelmed. Sure. But being able to go through that has really been helpful in me just, like, at least getting started. Yeah. So, and I think that's one of the most important things is, like, just do it. Like you said, you're going to suck in the beginning. But that's what, you know, we have these, you know, um, role-playing rooms or, you know, these chats going on is to have that accountability, which I think is important for me to have right now just where I'm at. So... Yeah, it's just wanting to take more control over my business mm -hmm. and doing that without um, prospecting. So, Yeah, look, I think with what you're doing right now, if you just increase the conversion rate and just turn back your ads, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. over the next 10 months, if your conversion rate was like at a 7 plus out of 10, mm -hmm. you would easily be doing one deal a month. Like just easily, it, easily, easily yeah. from like cold leads which is outbound mm -hmm. or like social yeah. media social media leads like easily one easily one yeah you know if you really maximize your schedule and then you're dialed up your conversion rate like it's one to four it's one to four transactions a month mm -hmm. yeah i think that that's just what i struggle with because i listen to all the playback calls obviously within the academy i just get so fixated on like watching someone like you mm-hmm just absolutely attack the phone call and then it's like man he absolutely killed it like that's I that's what I need to do that's what I need to be doing that's what I aspire to be and then I'm just like well shit like I don't know how he's able to you know think of things so quickly or shift a conversation or translate you know transition to this sort of question or you know what I mean so it's just like it's just overwhelming sometimes to like it's, it's really just practice know. It's practice. And, th and yeah. that was exactly what, what today's like accelerator call was about is like, one of my guys was like, he's like, man, your, your statements of acknowledgements are like so conversational. And I just feel like yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm just, not, I'm just not that way. And I'm like, you are, you're a great conversationalist. You're just too busy thinking of the next thing to say. So you're not fully in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like, that's why it's so important to just understand the framework. And just like, mm -hmm. if you understand the components of the framework, it's just intro, which is like easy. And then problem and motivation. Mm -hmm. And you just need to understand like 10 different ways to dig for problem and motivation. And just like memorize mm -hmm. those. Yeah, that's just, helpful. Just memorize the 10 different, I don't know if there is 10 different ways, but like just memorize all the different ways to dig for problem and motivation. So you don't have to think of the question. You just know, well, I just need yeah. to dig for a problem right now. So I would like, just let's just pull out one of the problem questions. 
and I, I have them all on deck, so I'm actually present in the phone call to have a conversation with them in my statements of acknowledgments. Well, That's why, well, like, to a third party that doesn't understand the framework, my calls will yeah. sound very like, what the fuck is the structure? It sounds like he's having a full-on conversation. No, no, it's it's problem, question, SOA, problem, question, SOA, problem, question, SOA, motivation, question, SOA, motivation, question, SOA, pre-close, close. close. Well, Objection well. handle, dig up another problem, question, SOA, problem, question, SOA, problem, question, SOA, pre-close, close. close. Well. And like the frame, if you understand the framework, you'll, you can like pick it out or you're like, oh, I see the pattern. I understand the pattern. But to someone yeah. that doesn't understand the framework, it's like, what, how do I learn this? I don't understand what Aaron's doing. Yeah. Cause it just sounds like he's just having a conversation. Yeah. Is there a method to this? Yes. There is like, I'm autistic and I need to under, I need everything to like be broken down technically. Yeah. And so I broke it down technically. And, um, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm glad I came across your page and ultimately got a made a decision to join the Academy. I've only been in it for a little bit, but I've already learned so much. So cool. good. Obviously appreciate, appreciate all that you've given us and yeah. Make just, sure you're uh, here on the Mondays. Yeah. I totally forgot about it. <laughs> Don't. I won't now. <laughs> all right, cool. Thank you so much. This has been actually incredibly eye-opening and helpful. So Yeah, of course.